Hi guys, it's Claudia here on Claudia's Universe Vlogs. It's my delight to film tonight to share with you the gala at which I spoke with about five other panelists. And the gala was last Sunday, Divas with a Pen, and it was held at the Hyatt Place at Stonecrest Mall. My student, my former student and present friend, Alicia Brown, spearheaded the event and she launched her book Surviving Stolen Innocence at the event. It's a wonderful book. You can pick it up wherever books are sold. I also shared my books. That would be If You Love Me Come, my novel, my Wanda Be Wonders series, and my poetry book, Soft Tsunami. It was a fabulous event. I loved speaking there and sharing with the audience, selling books, and I even made a contact with one reader who said she wanted to read one of my books, my novel, If You Love Me Come, at a book club meeting that uh, very soon in the future, and she would introduce my book to her club. So I was like, ooh, that's going to be wonderful if I, well, not wonderful, that'll be spectacular if she can make that happen. But thanks so much for watching. Share, like, subscribe, comment. I love it all. Have a beautiful Friday. Love you. Bye. Oh, this is my natural hair. Uh, protective style. To be with Alicia, the whole purport for this ceremony. <laughs> Alicia is just a shining star. She's just a light. And to have her mother and sit on my left and her co-workers and her counselors, baby sister, cousin, brother. What can I say? I look out at you all and I'm just amazed. I'm glad. Now, there was an accident on the way. And I was like, oh my goodness, I don't want to be late for Alicia's ceremony. Yes, ma'am. But you know what? God always has us, accident or not. He makes sure we're in place wherever we're supposed to be. Amen. Right here, I'm right on time. I walked into your smiles and you, some of you came in after me. <laughs> and it's all right, it's all right. Now, Alicia was just like that in class. Just like you saw her come up here and take this podium and have you laughing and telling her story. The same amazing presence. Amen. in class, as you said, as a friend on the job. Do you think I was going to let her leave my class? Why not? Why not? Why not? Sometimes you have something that come through that door you want to say, baby, you know, your mama needs to know you need another class. Let me get you another class. But no, when you have that potential, you say, no, darling, you have to stay with me. And I'm so glad her mom was on my side because throughout the year, she was my shining star. She could do anything that I asked her. I want you to grade these papers. I want you to check this off. I want you to go down and ask me a song. So, okay, all right. Just like that. I love her. I just love her. Now, how she came to write her wondrous book, uh, I was working on a manuscript oh, yes. entitled to honor the heart. Don't you like that title? There's something about that, to honor the heart. I'm a victim of, well not a victim, survivor. I'm not going to say, I'm not going to say a victim. I'm a shining survivor <laughs> of rape, rapes. And what you must understand is nothing can mar the beauty of who you are. When spirit says you are, you are a soul here to experience this life and go on this journey. No matter what happens along the way, that might be a mark to some people's eyes or a black mark. It can only fall away once you know who you are, who you belong to. And when you step out, you honor yourself and spirit when you stand up and come here and manifest all the things that you wanted to manifest here. So no, I had to write that book, and it's a manuscript at this point, and I'm seeking a publisher, and I wanted to also bring with me those women who had survived the experience. And there are so many 
people who have survived that experience but want to keep it hidden, uh, don't want their names connected with it, and I, I can understand that to a certain extent, but still, whenever you tell what happened to you, show that you can step beyond it and survive and let other people know, then when you fly, you take everybody with you who have experienced that and let them know that they can fly and that they can teach others. Nothing holds you back, nothing. Okay, it's all, it's all a part of the divine plan. Now, I've always been a writer, always. Even from a little bitty girl, you can find me in the corner, Al, are you a reader? Always in the corner reading, where is Tusi? Oh my God, check behind the curtain, because I'm going to be hidden somewhere reading a book. So it's, it was just organically natural to write a book. So I started writing very, very early, and my first fan was my mother. And I'm sure Miss McCoy was Alicia's first fan for whatever she was doing. You know, mothers, fathers, we cheer our little people on. And my mother would always encourage me, write, tell the story, tell the story. So consequently, before you today, you have some of the books that I've written that are on Amazon, and that big book, yes, the biggest one, that's a novel. It's about a family in Atlanta, and the trials and tribulations that they go through, and you have various sisters and friends, and they come together and create this neighborhood. Well, remember the neighborhood that they tore down for um, the Centennial Park? They, well, I don't want to, I want to say a neighborhood. They call them the get a ghetto. Mm -hmm. A project. Yes. Techwood! Techwood! You get the apple. Yes. <laughs> that is the, the neighborhood in the book. So I, I used what was actually there. I went into Techwood years ago and I photographed Techwood so that when I sculpted it in writing to someone's mind, possibly, who had been there or had known of it, you would see the truth running through the book as well as the fiction, the fictional part. So that is near and dear to me. Uh, and after that one comes a three-part series. That is my character, Wanda B. Wonders. Wanda B. Think about her name. Wanda B. Wonders. It's like, God, I'd be wondering about what's going on in this room. What are they doing in there? Is it purple in there? Is it royal colors? They got all these divas and kings in there? Yes, what are they doing? Wanda B. Wonders about everything. And guess what? She wonders in two colors. Black and white. In America, we got black and white going on. She talks about the first black president. She talks about Disney finally getting their first black princess. It doesn't matter that she stayed a frog and the picture. She was still the first black princess. She talks about everything. But let me tell you, let me tell you, when you get served lemons in life, you know what we say? You know as a people, we make the best lemonade possible, right? Wanda makes her lemonade out of everything that comes up, and she makes it funny. And I created sketches, short sketches about different things going on. Okay, one more thing. What about the woman that had the 17, 18 babies? You remember that? They called her Octo what? They called her Octo Mom. Wanda B said, what? How in the world are you going to give this woman money, raise money for her, give her a van, call her Octomom, and put all the little bits in? How many of you read Jesse B. Simmons in school? Okay, Je Langston, Hughes, Langston Hughes created this black man that was deemed a, a, a black everyman a black everyman from the lower echelon of society and he talked about everything in two colors not great black and white and he made it hilariously funny he was like lord please don't have world war ii world war three because you know who's going to be knocking trying to get in the bomb shelter please let us in he was like, you know black folks gonna be out there building their own shelter because they can't get 
it in the white. And it's, it, it, when I read that, I just loved that character so much. I said, oh, wait a minute. And Jesse sat at the bar in Harlem and talked to Mr. Boyd, an academician, about black and white. I said, what can I create? in a contemporary fashion that would do the same thing in honor of my literary hero. I said, what about a black woman named Wanda B. Wonders? Cause she be wondering about all this stuff. And she ain't gonna sit at the bar. I don't sit at bars. I said, Wanda is gonna sit in the nail salon. Get her nails done. Miss Fang is gonna do her nails and she gonna tell her all about what's going on in our society. That's what we do. So <laughs> that is that three-part series. So I, I have a, a mainstream publisher who's going to bring her out again, <laughs> reissue her. So I'm like, oh, yes, spirit does answer prayer. OK? And that last book in the back is a poetry collection. Because I'm the kind of writer I absolutely love words. I love words. So since I love words, I throw them up and run under and I can write essays, poetry, novels, short stories, speeches, and whatever else you need because I believe in the base foundation is the word and the word comes together to create your dreams. So whenever you dream, write it down. You know people say that all the time, write it down. When you write something down, it becomes even more locked into, invested into who you are. Come on in and how you doing, right on time. <laughs> it becomes even, it's more real and you can bring it to the forefront when you lock it down and write, and, and, and write it. Now, one more thing about that, one more thing about that. I was watching the Oprah Winfrey show and, and you all might, uh, Remember this one. And there was an African woman who wrote her dreams on paper, what she wanted to manifest. Remember that one? She folded it up and buried it, put it in the ground and walked away from it. You don't have to see it every day now. Let me see, what am I supposed to be doing? In five years, I want to be doing this. No, you can plant that seed in the most important place, in the most imperative place, and that is within your heart in your soul and you and the divine work together watering that seed nurturing it those seeds and it actually manifests it happens whatever you want can happen so you just believe in it and do it and on that note i will take my seat <laughs>